This retouching technique um, comes from a buddy of mine who showed me a really interesting way to target certain colours in your photo using complex masks. And a lot of the time when you think about using masks, we're thinking about adjusting tonal values in photos. Um, whether you're targeting shadows, highlights, blending images um, due to tonality because you've done a bracketing exposure, but what about selecting individual colours and just targeting those? So a lot of the time when you might be thinking, oh look, I want to I want to drop the reds back here, you might do something like go into hue saturation, grab that, to come in, grab your reds, let's grab our reds, pull them back a little bit to where you want. Then on your mask what you can do is you can hit Command or Control I, invert the colours, B for your brush tool. D for your default to get your white and black. Come in and just and then just paint it out. But let's look at our mask. Little white dot, faded, like soft edge brush. You know, does it do the job? Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's pretty rough. There's a much better way to do it. Enter the trash can. Again, let's go to our hue saturation. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our panel here where you've got adjustments, masks and history, we're going to click on masks and you'll get up this panel pixel mask density feather mask edge color range invert we're going to click on color range now what color range is going to do it's going to pull up a panel and it's going to give us an eyedropper tool and as you can see here it's going to give you a mask of what you're selected so let's come over and let's select our red bang straight away and this is our mask for it. So you can increase and decrease your mask as needed. And then you can sort of change what's called your fuzziness and what that's doing is it's sort of targeting how much of that red value. So if I increase it you can sort of see it's picking up all the range of reds through the greens here, but I'm really looking for these rich sort of reds, so you're going to want to keep it quite low and build it up, so it's just targeting exactly what you're after. So once you've done that, you click OK, and it will basically create the mask for you right here. So now you can see, if I zoom in, you can see the mask that it's created. And before, as you saw with my mask, it was just a foggy a uh, white dot, but now it's quite a complex sort of selection. But it's selected all these other areas here, which I don't really want. So let's just hold down the Alt key, click back on our mask. And now I'll come back into adjustments, back into red, and let's pull back that slider. And now I can sort of really target those reds. So if I turn up, toggle on and off, the reds sort of pop. Hold down my Alt key again. Now I don't really want it to target any of these colours here. So what I can do is I can hit X and toggle pure black at 100% opacity and I can come in and just paint out all this selection of red which I don't actually want Photoshop to select and change the um, strength of with the hue saturation, slightly desaturating it. Click my Alt key back into my mask. So now this mask is only affecting this tiny little bit of red over here because that's what I've asked the mask to do by selecting red. Now in another example if I come over here this shot that I've got um, in the waterfalls I've used the exact same thing to target the greens here. So what I had is as I'm going through my processing these greens here just started to pop a little bit too much. So what I do I use I jumped into masks and I selected color range and it produced this mask for me and as you can see it selected all the areas of green and if I toggle on and off you can see that's what it was before and that's what it is afterwards it's just dialed back if I look at the adjustment I've made minus 27 percent saturation because it's only targeting green, you don't really have to worry about it 
touching any of your reds, your yellows, because you can see exactly what the mask is going to start to touch. See, it doesn't really select anything much on the rock. But if you were worried about it, just grab your, grab your brush tool. This is just, a, as I said, just a very complex mask. Paint black, so it will basically hide it. And that's it. It's such a great little tool just sitting here. Color range in your mask adjustment whenever you add a, a um, adjustment layer here. And you can add a lot of refinement to your workflow. Cheers.